Well, it's Tuesday, July 23rd, 2024. You're a great marketer. You've been doing everything you can to get off your addiction to third-party cookies, and then boom, Google announces they're going to continue. What do you do? What have you been doing? All that hard work and energy. How did we even get here? Why That's exactly we? what we're going to talk about. Why are we about. here, Tim? Why are we here? We're here because cookies, man. I mean, this is a this is a roundabout. But look, let's be quick. We know marketers are frustrated. Uh, it's been a seesaw, a flip flopping event with Google here. Rich, where do we even start to begin? Well, I mean, let's let's take it from the top. This is really a reflection of, I think, the failure of Google's attempts with its. Uh, privacy sandbox, right? I mean, that's that's what <laughs> that's what this all is all about, I think. And you know, the, the tests of the privacy sandbox in Q2 2024, they went horribly wrong, both in terms of effectiveness, ease of use, increased latency, and overall ROI. And there are concerns that the sandbox tools basically preference Google and aren't great for privacy. So I think the announcement that we've just seen is a reflection of that. Well, and that's pressure from regulatory boards, right? So I, I'm going to read here, the UK's Competition and Markets Authority, the CMA, they're the ones who really were putting the pressure on, and the Information Commissioner's Office, the ICO, um, they did not like what they saw when it came to Privacy Sandbox. So to your point, Google tried to figure this out, didn't, so now a stay of execution. I mean we don't know, but I suspect that the CMA has told uh, Google that they're far away from taking the, the sandbox, uh, making the sandbox an effective replacement for third-party cookies. And they're in fact, in fact wasting uh, everyone's time in the industry, which is placing undue burden on Google's competitors and causing uncertainty, which is harming competition. That's what I suspect. And I, I, I also think that probably upon hearing that message from the CMA, the Google is scrambling a bit, right? Um, this announcement took the industry uh, you know, off guard. So as I think it's a bridge plan, Google's gonna uh, try to mirror some flavor of what Apple did uh, in its mobile uh, iOS with ATT. Totally agree. It's the first thing I posted on LinkedIn when I read this news. Um, and for everyone who, doesn't understand, ATT, you know, ask, ask app not to track. Uh, we've all seen it, you download an app, you have to determine if that app can track you around to serve you advertisements. And I mean, look, if we wanna use that as a baseline for just adoption and what consumers are doing, um, if consumers were actually given a choice to opt in or out of third party cookies, uh, generous reports would say that 25% of consumers to date have opted in for advertisers to track them on the Apple's platform. But almost all reports I've seen since it rolled out is about 10% yeah. opt in. Okay. I was gonna say 25% is generous. Super generous. I mean, that's like best case scenario, I would imagine. So, but I think it's worth talking what we're talking about. Like, what do you think would be a mechanism Google could roll out to consumers to opt in, opt out? What would that look like? Well, the interesting thing, I mean, it's gonna have to be done at the Chrome browser level. Um, and there are many ways that they could actually do it. Perhaps they're hoping for a, you know, click and forget kind of, <laughs> uh, you know, not real consumer choice uh, action. But I think the problem is that because Apple has taken such a clear, um, unobfuscated, uh, you know, example, a template with what they were doing with um, ATT, that that's the bar. That's the bar that the regulators, um, you know, the privacy lobby are going to be looking at. If you're going to give consumer choice, you've got to make that choice extremely crystal clear. crystal clear. And I think once you do that, that's where you get 25%, 10% of consumers going, yeah, that's fine. You know, that's I, the problem. I totally agree. And look, this is going to have to happen at a website level because you're opting in to, to different things for the given website. If I go to acme.com or brandx.com, you know, do, I give, do I give brand one my data, but brand two not my data? And I agree with you. If it is crystal clear, unlike the banner ad blindness we're used to, um, consumers are gonna opt out. Why would I give you my personal information, my intimate details for no value exchange? When you make it that clear, like uh, ATT did, Consumers are going to lean to the opt-out button. Yeah, and I think so. If you if you kind of think about what does the news really deliver, uh, you know, in terms of kind of market or strategy, what's the big impact? And you know, at first I was like, whoa, hold on a minute, this is like, 
this is huge. And then I looked at actually the, what Google had actually come out with, what they'd said, and I thought about the implications. I actually think it may end up being a little bit of a nothing burger because what, what are we really going to change in terms of our strategy as marketers? And I think if you kind of look at it in terms of, all right, the Chrome's um, traffic, its browser traffic is, is roughly about 65% of the internet uh, traffic. We already know that Safari and Firefox and others have already deprecated third-party uh, cookies. You've got that 65% of Chrome that are now going to have to give this very clear uh, and obfuscated choice to consumers. And we know from what we saw with uh, Apple's ATT uh, notification that a, a large chunk of consumers are going to, 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 uh, to opt out of yeah. third party cookies. Now, the question, the question is, is like how many? And it may well be that it's going to be a period of time. It could be, you know, a year, two years of a back and forth between the privacy lobby, legislators in terms of like exactly how far Google go with, you know, the, that choice. Um, but either way, they're going to have to test it. And so immediately, I actually think it's going to bring forward the kind of deprecation of third party cookies in terms of overall traffic, because now it's not resting on privacy sandbox being this be all and end all solution. They can actually get a prompt out to consumers on, you know, consumer choice. That doesn't, that's not going to take Google a long time. And they're going to start testing with that, I imagine, relatively quickly now they've made the estimate. So you're going to see some of that 65% of the traffic starting to go down probably more and more over time. So you're going to be left with probably an accelerating portion of your traffic which don't accept third party cookies, even earlier than if we'd waited for the privacy sandbox to, to kill everything. And you've still got the, this reality that first party data is a, a better form of driving results for you as a business. I, I would totally agree. Look, uh, and advertisers are still going to be in the same pickle, right? Um, as people opt out of this, they're still going to need ways to connect with consumers. So I completely agree. This change is nothing for me. If I put my brand marketing hat back on, right, the 20 years I spent in the B2C world, nothing changes. First party data is always my strut. That's the, that's the bulk of my diet as a marketer. I want to be heavy and rich on first party data, some zero party data in there for the preferences, things I can't deduce and fair. But third party data is like a nice to have on the outside. So I don't think it changes. And, and look, by the way, we have, a, we have a great article on this. I think it's a great article. It's got some stats and facts in there. You know, 85% of consumers, they want brands that treat them like an individual. And 82% favor brands that strive to develop a relationship. You, you can't develop a relationship when you have a third party, literally by definition, by name. There is a third party in between you and your consumer. Why would you let that happen? When you can have that direct relationship, have a first party relationship with consumers, it, it's better loyalty, it's better customer lifetime value. So nothing changes, but I agree with you. I think it's gonna be an opt out scenario and they're gonna be gone sooner than later. Well, it, you know, it may well be that there is for a period of time um, an internet of two camps. <laughs> you know, you've got a a portion of that audience that are going to be okay with third party cookies, but it's going to be, it, even if you take the most ambitious uh, view of how many people are going to like opt in to uh, uh, still receiving, you know, third party cookies, um, it's going to be considerably less than 50% of your internet traffic until the privacy lobby and legislation actually kind of, you know, tightens the screws. So you're going to have, you know, unless you, unless you unless you want to ignore 50% of your audience, you're going to have to invest in other solutions around other identifiers, first party data, UID 2.0 uh, from Trade Desk and other solutions to, to really future proof what you're doing in, in the MarTech and ad tech space. Well, look, let's get selfish for a second. Let's, let's talk to our customers, right? Because our clients are watching. Um, nothing changes here at Wonderkin. Our value has always stood for first party data. We're, we're trying to build those first party data relationships for our brand clients. We have amazing, you know, first party list growth tools to, to do that particularly. And regardless of third party cookies, whether you're heavily invested in them or just using them lightly, 95% of your traffic is still anonymous to you, right? So if you have an identity resolution partner like us, where we have 9 billion devices, uh, a billion opted-in consumers, two trillion events observed per year, all in a privacy compliant manner with or without cookies. Um, that's the partnership that you need to identify your traffic, build those first party relationships, you know, and trigger email and SMS, which I don't care what 
uh, survey data you go look at, consumers are definitely buying. The click to purchase is happening far more, almost 100% more, over 100% more, in email and SMS than a banner ad. So consumers don't want a better banner ad. They don't want a, a better third party cookie. They want personalization, but they want it in a privacy compliant way. And I think that's what we're all about as a, as a company. So this doesn't change anything at Wonderkin. It's stay the course. Uh, first party data should always be your, your go-to. Yeah, and let's, uh, we will watch and update you as the, uh, the privacy sandbox circus uh, powers on uh, over the next you know, number of months, perhaps even years. Yeah, well, it's, it's an ongoing saga, but it is what it is. But anyway, that's our point of view on this. Please hit us on LinkedIn, Richard Jones, Tim Glom. Uh, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Follow us because we're going to be commenting on this. We're going to be sharing some of our, our favorite. Uh, that's the one thing we should do. We, we wanted to get this out quickly, so we're not putting in a bunch of uh, our favorite posts that we've seen to date. But uh, follow us on LinkedIn. We're going to be reposting some of our uh, favorite the best reactions. Yes. Uh, I think some of the most astounded yeah. reactions to yesterday's news as people reacted to the uh, the immediate earthquake that we yeah. potentially saw when you when you just focused on the headline before you actually dug in and kind of thought, what's actually going on here? Yeah, hindsight's twenty twenty. Well, good. Rich, always great. I'm sure we'll be talking about this again soon. Yes, I'm sure. All right, we'll see you next time.